Welcome back to the three months of modal logics, a sequel to the 100 days of logic here with Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with epistemic logic, looking at axiom 4.3 in doxastic and epistemic logic. So, axiom 4.3 is going to be stronger than axiom 4.2, but weaker than axiom 4.4. It's going to be in between axioms 4 and axioms 5 as well. So let's take a look. Basically, axiom 4.3 states that either you believe that belief in P implies belief in Q, or you believe that belief in Q implies belief in P. Or epistemically, either you know that knowing that P implies knowing that Q, or knowing that P implies knowing that P. Knowing that Q rather implies knowing that P. Basically, we're saying that if S, S believes either that S believes that P implies S believes that Q, or S believes that S believes that Q implies that S believes that P. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a lot of kind of the rules and tricks of logic, this may look like a very strange axiom to you. Why would you think that P implies Q or Q implies P? Well, that's actually one of the laws of logic based on our definition of implication. If you don't know about that, check out the video on implication. It is a logical truth that either P implies Q or Q implies P. These axioms are claiming that for all pairs of propositions, you either believe that your believing P implies your believing Q, or your believing that Q implies your believing that P. While this is a logical truth, I'm still going to be quite skeptical of this axiom, not only for the reasons listed in 4.2, but for some new ones as well. This is basically saying that Mr. Bell either believes that if he believes that it is raining, then he must believe that it is sunny, or he believes that if he believes that it is sunny, then he believes that it is raining. My point here is that this is a literal translation of that statement, and it seems counterintuitive, and while it may work out logically that P implies Q or Q implies P, it seems that because most people's intuitions are going to balk at that kind of idea of either you believe that it raining means that it's sunny or it's sunny means that it's raining, people, even if it's logically implied by things, are not going to believe it. That's the point here. And people often believe that the laws of logic are false, as we've noted before, and is a major problem for doxastic and epistemic logic. People often believe the laws of logic are false because they are often counterintuitive. And an especially counterintuitive one is P implies Q or Q implies P. Miss Lou either knows that her building is tall implies that she knows that her building is short, or she knows that her knowing her building is short implies her knowing that her building is tall. Basically the same problem there. Corollaries might be helpful to understand these axioms, they might not. You believe that either you don't believe P or you believe Q, or you don't believe Q or you believe P. This gets rid of some of the problems that are going to arise from some of our contradictory intuitions about implications, but it still seems to me that this is going to be problematic. At the very least, it seems to me that these disjunctions or implications are far too complicated for most people to hold actual beliefs about, implicit or not, even if we claim that they're implicit beliefs and they can be quickly inferred from our actual beliefs, it seems that someone would take some time to infer these beliefs because they're relatively complicated logical statements. Moral of the story is that these are going to be very strange beliefs to posit that everyone has about every single proposition. These axioms are going to have some significant problems. They will have all the same troubles that we had with axiom 4.2. This begs the question against the skeptic and assumes that all agents have many beliefs about not only all propositions, but all pairs of propositions now. It seems to me that most people that have lived have never heard of most propositions that exist and therefore would have difficulty believing that those propositions imply anything else.
Up next, we're going to be looking at an even stronger version of this, which I will have even more objections to, known as Axiom 4.4 in Doxastic and Epistemic Logic. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.